Welcome back to GEMS Podcast. I'm your host, Genesis Amaris Kemp, and with me today is Oladeli Malawa Ngozi, and here's a bit about Oladeli. Oladeli is a broadcaster, producer, and disc jockey legend, I-I-R-H-O-F, disc jockey in Shriney 2019, I-I-R-H-O-F, broadcast producing in Shriney 2021, and he's also the I-I-R-H-O-F Lifetime Achiever 2022, Proprietary Negozi Time Multimedia, and today we're going to go behind the scenes with him and learn about his personal side and his background and what led him to all of his accomplishments in radio and broadcasting. And without further ado, please welcome Ola Deli Malawa Ngozi to GEMS Podcast. How are you today? I am doing well. How are you doing? Well, always take time for family. Very busy, but we take time for family, especially someone who's with WB and and the great Jen Samaris Kemp. And of course, last night, you know, we didn't get that much rest. We had an outstanding show uh, talking about, uh, you know, the declaration of Gary and Anna in 1972. And it was an outstanding program. And thank you for being a part. Thank you. So I want you to give us a fun fact that my audience surely doesn't know, and maybe your following community does not know about you. Well, basically, um, I love uh, playing golf, and um, I actually am a very, very good pool player. Um, I go to different community debates from time to time, like to debate. Um, I'm also a girls basketball coach in my community. Yeah, so there's a lot of things you don't know. I mean, I, that, but, you know, that's why I said when I first came on here, man, you family. I don't, <laughs> I would not be here when you were not family. Trust me, all around the world, I understand. I have a lot of respect for this young lady because I'm very busy, man. Nice. I had no idea that you were a basketball coach for girls, a good pool player. Man, I need to learn how to play pool so I can hustle some people. Just kidding. I y'all. love golf, though. <laughs> I love golf. Well, so you got to get into golf, man. That's where you get a chance to come up with new ideas, Genesis. You know, even it's just one with nature, smelling the grass, man. And, you know, you're you're a believer, so it's it's a, it's a good time to be able to just be at one, be with a fake, you know, some of your great partners, people that you love, have a great caddy that's you know that you can talk to. It's a great it's a great feel. I love golf. I actually used to caddy for the United Way golf tournament whenever I was wow. working for a Fortune 500 oil and gas company here in yeah. Houston. And it was pretty cool because whenever you are um, doing the caddy and you're driving it, you get to hear all of the inside conversations that you wouldn't have ordinarily heard in the office. And you also get to connect with them on a personal level wow. as well as a professional level and tie the two together. So that was pretty um, amazing. That's one thing I miss about working in oil and gas is some of those nonprofit activities that I got to participate in. Wow. Well, you know what? Well, that's great. Just, um, that means you've been, you've been on the bluegrass. You smelled the aroma. Yes, indeed. Okay. So now let's dive into your background. I want you to walk us through your personal story because I know bits and pieces, but my audience doesn't. What was your saving grace and how did you get involved into radio and broadcasting? What was it like growing up for you? Well, it was very nice. I mean, as a, a young child, growing up in uh, Compton, California, uh, my mom and pop had a, a wonderful boathouse, you know what I mean, where you had the, you had the boat right there underneath the uh, the hangar. Um, I had an orange tree in the backyard, and i never forget, we used to play... <laughs> He used to play, hit the girl with the oranges. Now, guys, it was a different time now. I know the Me Too movement now. We grew up in the 70s, okay? We called it. <laughs> and, um, you know, my mom said, all right, you better stop, you know, you the, hitting, hitting them people with the oranges. One day, the orange tree's not going to grow. And sure enough, and I was 11 years old, and the orange tree died. But growing up as a child in California, it was wonderful. Um, we got a chance to go to the beach, man. I was always into sports. My mom and dad always kept me uh, busy. Um, I always wanted to be a radio broadcaster since I was a little boy. And uh, in kindergarten, I would come home and go upstairs and into the bathroom, and I would do my nightly reports, looking at myself, you know, scribble down some things, and I would learn cadence and learn how to be able to project the voice, uh, imagine, you know, amazingly, you know, all that as a little kid. So my mom would come in like, "What were you doing?" I said, "Man, I'm on the race." Said, you know, she pat me on the head, said, "You know, that's what you're going to do." 
you know, you're going to be, you're going to be that, you know, and always having good grades. Um, something happened in the summer of 1981. And uh, that's when gang warfare came to conflict. Um, it changed the landscape, uh, changed my life forever. Cause I, you know, I was introduced to gangs, you know, 12 years old, um, actively gang banged for three years from, you know what I mean? From the age of 12 to the age of 15. Um, still the people that, I, that, 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 you know, war with every day, shout out to the Nutty Block Clips, you know what I mean? 114th Compton Boulevard from Kemp Avenue. That's what we're all from the big, big fair affair called Rosecrans Avenue. You know, the grace of God, uh, my parents moved to Philadelphia in 1985. And I'm gonna tell you a big story about that in one moment, but um, my dad being the pastor, you know, people who grew up in the church, you know, shout out to the, the Grand Old Church of God in Christ Incorporated, Memphis, Tennessee. Um, headquarters, Memphis, Tennessee, worldwide headquarters. Um, my dad, I was homeless for, for like um, a year. Wow. And it was a little sad. I mean, my, I was a danger to my family, definitely. And my dad, my mom wanted to come back home. She was originally from Philadelphia. My dad, uh, originally from Trenton, New Jersey. Um, they wanted to come back home. And I was out in the streets, man. I was out there, man, you know, doing what I had to do. And one of my, um, my brothers from the set, he was like, yo, man, your dad been looking for you. I mean, I'm not trying to get him, man, but whatever. Because I was already upset that he kicked me out. I'm not trying to get him, what the hell do you want? And so my dad, you know, cornered me and he said, look, I'm moving back to Philadelphia. And um, you want to come, you want to come, but you better come with the clothes on your back because I'm leaving tomorrow. A week before that happened, pro prophetically, not we're gonna work in the prophetic, not the pathetic today. So I never forget Mr. Washington, Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, Keenan Washington was my advisor. And he, you know, sat me down and said, "Man, what do you want to do? Man? You know, you see all your friends, man, going this way. People going to jail. People are being killed and murdered out in these streets. What do you want to do?" I said, I don't care what you're talking about, man. I mean, I'm out here banging for life. That's what I do, man. Well, I'm crippling. He said, where are you going to be the next 10 years? I walked out. I walked out of the advisory room and shut up, you know, and walked right out of school and right back in the streets doing my thing. So now I go to, you know, in time, a week later, I saw my cousin Vaughn uh, get murdered in front of, you know, uh, well, I didn't get a chance to see him get murdered. I, I was coming out the house, white tea and all, jeans, fresh, you know, young, 15. And, you know, we were going to stop and go get some, you know, get some beers, whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? And I said, oh, man, I forgot my wallet. We're going home. I'll meet you down there. He got into an altercation with a, um, a West Indian guy. West Indian, West Indian guy went to the uh, his car, which was Trump, took, pulled out a sawed off shotgun and shot, him, shot his head off his shoulder blades. Oh so my when I gosh. Came in, so when I came into, you know, into the deli, you know, what you call, you know, delis in, in the East Coast, but out there, stop and go to beer spots. Um, my cousin's body was here. His head was over there. So that's the first um, change, lifetime change, trauma. So let's pause here really quick because this is a lot of heavy information. So between 12 and 15, you were gang banging, you were repping the Crips. And then you go through a period of homelessness where your parents put you out because then you were becoming a danger to your family and they didn't want that drama or, you know, the heat on their back door or front door. So whenever you were involved in that lifestyle, um, was it hard for you to decipher between the Crips being your family versus your actual family members being your family? Because I'm sure your parents, you know, they wanted what was best for you. But obviously, you were probably a hot headed teenager, wanted to follow the crowd and etc. So and I know you eventually made it out of the gang life, but it took you three years. So um, I want you, as you continue with your story, to lead up into that transition because there are some people who never make it out of that, that gang life. They either end up in prison, they end up six feet under, or you know they lose their family or et cetera. And there's a lot of things and people 
think whenever they go into a gang, whether it's the Crips, the Bloods, the Latin Kings or whatever, they feel like they're bonded by life, but they don't know there's consequences when you get outside of them too. That's why I love you, Genesis, man. You, you, you asked a question and you're a long one. That's why I love you. That's why we have you here at WBNF. Um, basically, no, my parents were not my family. Absolutely not. My brother's out in the streets. My, my, my the, the own sister's out in the streets. That was my family. And so I came to the realization that when going back to my cousin Vaughn's uh, untimely death, that was that was a trigger. You, you know, I'm answering that question when you say, "What? Who is your family?" I'm still wasn't scared. I'm still banged for about another week and a half. You know what I mean? After my, my cousin, you know, okay, things happen. I mean, and what you know. And I always was cool when it came down to business. You know, when it came down to cripping, and that was high head because you, if you're high head, you lose your life. You always got to be cool in the gang setting. You got to be calculated, play chess. But I decided to take up my dad's offer. I became kind of tired of seeing death. I wasn't worried about my own life. All right, you know, pay tax, be black, and die. But at that time, I was only doing two out of three. I wasn't old enough to pay taxes yet. Other than, yeah, I was paying taxes. I went to the store. So, yeah, I was paying tax, being black and not. So, um, moved to Philadelphia. And um, it was weird for me, but I knew I was safe spiritually and mentally. First, we begin here. We moved here on a Monday. That Thursday, man, was the move uh, bombing of 61 houses on Osage Avenue in West Philadelphia. So, my mom was like, well, no, we're going to stay in California. They, you know, we, we, why are we here? <laughs> they they blown up black folks' whole house. Wow. And whenever so, you were. <laughs> so that's crazy. So, I mean, but <laughs> getting into school, my mentality changed. I knew what I wanted to be going back to um, a child, um, an, an, an educator, a communicator. Um, and um, I still didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, remember that coming out of, remember that Philadelphia was pretty bad at that time too. Crack just, 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 just arrived. And a lot of young, I saw, I saw friends who were dirty, that dirty Lenny become, you know, driving now Benz. Like, dirty man, dirty Lenny. What the? He stuck last week. Now he's taking baths and I'm wearing cologne and he, he, he matching? How's that? Selling crack. So I already went through that. See, I told you I played chess. Even to this day in my 50s, I played chess with everyone and everything. But that guy just went to jail. That guy just got shot. And then it's this demonic. You feel the you feel it. Like, mm -mm. look at look at Miss Johnson. Now she asked me for sex. But she was the girl, she was the girl of my dreams six months ago. So, and then Dirty Lenny got killed. Right before I graduated high school, he got killed the night before I got graduated high school. It, it, sorry, guys. You know, uh, Lenny Tompkins, Leonard Tompkins, but we called him Dirty Lenny. But and even when he got clean, we still called him Dirty Lenny. So it's not no no uh, uh, slur to the family. It, you know, to the family. You know, I love you, but we telling the story. And right right before I graduated high school, and I said, man, you know, Dirty Lenny was the man on. Uh, he was the man on the scene, the man on the avenue, and he's dead. Never thought about it. 1986, June 19th, 1986, changed my life. Wasn't 16 yet, was in Philadelphia. The death of Lynn Bias. If I wanted to use drugs, they stopped that day. Never use drugs in my life. If I wanted to use drugs, they stopped that day. If I wanted to sell drugs, they stopped that day. When Lynn Bias died of the first time using cocaine, partying, celebrate him being drafted by the Boston Celtics and died that same night. For us and our generation, it broke our heart. To this day, I live with that. Really, Lynn Bias' death still affects me. Remember, I was a teenager, a, a, a adolescent, in the middle of my adolescence with that. Really, what saved my life, man? Getting to school, getting degrees, um, bachelor and master, you know, in communications. Um, highest I can go in my field. Um, staying busy, helping people. Um, 
being friends of all the nerds and geeks and who are rich now and they're my friends and all the socialites are on you know saying on drugs and and PTSD out everybody thought and it's 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 crazy how I, the people that the people look down on are the people are my friends. Wow. I and never judge them. Highly capable people. Now you go to the family reunion. Hey, oh, you still look good. I know I look good. That's not the point. How's your family? But you know, so stuff like, stuff like that, right? But seeing the people that people with a downtrodden and come looking as beautiful as you right now, Jen. It's like, what's that? Is that Genesis? Like, yeah, that's Genesis. Who you, who you thought it was going to be? That's the great, to sit back like Maya Angelou and the girls, like, mm, 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 look at that. We see her. Because I love stories like that. I love the so-called ugly duckling and swans stories. Because we all should treat every human being, whether they, whatever, like a human being. Love them, nourish them, to try to get them to a point where they can maximize their abilities. That's what I'm about. And, 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 and trust me, seeing a lot of my friends get locked up in penitentiary, <laughs> hearing the stories of people like, you know, people, when, when uh, Chinchilla Jonisha does her shows on, sun, on Sunday nights or at, at WBN News Forum, all those brothers in prison. Now, all, I'm going to tell you something, be honest with you, I don't know if brothers did it. But the fact of the matter is, I'm being honest, that being locked up for a crime only should took 10 years, then you locked up for 35. Come on. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. But playing chess, being spiritual, eye aware, um, help me, man, to navigate through these processes every single day. And I'm I'm so grateful to the Almighty God for that, because there's him that kept me from falling. It was him that uh, presented me faultless for his name's sake. It was him um, that keeps me going day to day. Um, Cause I worked <laughs> seven, really seven days, even on my days off, I worked seven days. Like, you know, I'm so privileged right now to be interviewed by you because usually Friday afternoons, I try to lay back and, and, and blah, 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 blah. But I said, no, no, I was so excited to this, this, uh, this interview with you, Genesis, very excited. And, and the, all the folks that, that uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, on Anchor FM, all the folks that that um, did not come on Genesis, y'all pay her twenty five dollars now. A bunch of cheap states. <laughs> oh man, thank you so much. And then it's it's actually empowering to hear your story um, from the transition to the transformation because I know working with you for my radio segment that I do on a monthly basis with WBNN. Sometimes it's like, I want to ask you a question. You're like, hold up, Genesis. Um, you know, we got to stick to the program and you're very structured. So now I get to, you know, have you in the hot seat and go behind the scenes with you. And now I hear how you transition from Compton, gang banging, losing loved ones, um, going to a Philly. So whenever you said Philly, the, um, the Fresh Prince of Belair song came in my head. I was like, what's Philadelphia? Born and raised. <laughs> that, that's my mom. That's my mom, actually. It's funny you said that. My mom was born in West Philadelphia. Shout out to my mother. May she uh, transition well. Rest in life. And so now um, then you're getting your degrees, a bachelor's and a master's in communication, which segues into where you are now, which is radio and broadcasting. So I want you to highlight your radio and broadcasting experiences. And the reason why I want you to do that is because you have made some incredible strides and accomplishments and you don't have that crabs in the barrel mentality, Eladeli. You believe in giving your hosts you know, the credit that they deserve. And you find us incredible sponsors because I never even thought about having the sponsors that I've had on my show. So um, let's segue into that. And then we'll, I'm watching the time. So we will be mindful of that too. No, no, it's fine. I, I'm enjoying it. It's, all, it's up to you. you just your show. I'm, 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 this is not WBNN. This is uh, Gems. It's anyway. But <laughs> I love see guys. You know what I'm saying? I, the smile that she has, I see all the time. So I'm gonna make her smile and laugh. So that way you see another side of Jen Mars Camp too, because I'll make her bust out laugh. Especially the night when she said uh, to one of our former hosts, "That's this is cow crap." Now going back to what I was saying, <laughs> you know, you didn't remember that show. I listen to that show sometimes. It makes my teeth white. Um, getting into um, to 
it, uh, alternative radio broadcasting is what we do. This is what this is. My great friend, the great Rochelle, Ricky Rochelle Jones. We used to get on the phone all the time, and we would write things, we would write scripts for other podcasts, you know, this and that, and we'd listen to other podcasts. That we, would come, we were writers. A lot of people didn't know that. We write, we wrote for other podcasts. And so we were talking one night, and we was like, you know what, man? We always talking excrement all the time. Excrement, excrement, excrement. So I said, you know what? I'm going to call you back, Rick. So Rick would be like, what, what are you up to? I said, I'll call you back. I'll call you back. Call you back. Click. So I, I never forget. So I was picking my son up at that time. My son was young. And I was picking my son up from uh, daycare. I think, how old was my son? My son at that time was 10. And... Um, I said, I got something. I got something. She said, what are you talking about? I got something called Blog Talk Radio. She said, what? What? I said, listen. I said, we can do this. She said, all right. That's, that's how simple the conversation was. All right. <laughs> and we started doing the show. Um, at that time, you know, uh, of course, my, my, my original name, of course, is Lonnie. I went with Beverly Jr. Before, you know, of course, I changed name to and Gosey. And we did a show called Lonnie Beverly Presents, featuring Ricky R. Jones. Girl, all that writing that <laughs> needs to put down for other podcasts. And this, and I want to say, I want to say this for you. You're the first ever host or anyone involved with the dynasty that ever knew that we wrote scripts and we wrote transcripts for other podcasts. No, no one ever knew that before. I want to say that for you. So. Now we're writing for yeah. Now, now we're writing for ourselves, girl. When I say, so we wrote. Oh, you know. Oh man. Okay, you froze there, Oladeli. So while he's frozen, so he went from writing scripts for other people's podcasts to then writing it for himself. And it all started with two people, him and Ricky R. Jones. So that's incredible, y'all. If you have a dream, you have a vision, you could definitely turn them into realities. And we're going to wait for him to come back in because he is still frozen. But this has been such a great conversation, so much learning about his background. Okay. So yeah, the script. So, um, and then we had the audacity to start something called Merck City Hip Hop Program. So Merck City was before the dynasty. It was it was way before the dynasty, and 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 it's right now uh, alternative radio's longest hip hop program program all time. This year will be ten years of the legendary Merck City Hip Hop Program, which is amazing. Um, and I named it Merck City because every, every, from Houston to Philadelphia to Los Angeles to Miami, whatever city, people get killed. Merck. Merck, Merck City in your area, you know what I mean? So that, that was like a more a, a battle cry to try to have people understand what drill music was about, understand what trap music was all about. And we're all, I'm gonna listen to that. No, you're gonna listen to it. You want we're gonna make you listen to it. So you understand these kids with these don't go around that corner, they're gonna kill you. Don't go down here, they're gonna kill you. Okay, so that way old folks can be like, oh, he said he was gonna kill me. I'm going on this block. So I'm like, well, I'm gonna go to the other um um you know supermarket on the other side of the street. I mean, I'm being facetious, but it taught us to embrace the like you, the youth, and what you're listening to, what you're about. So through this grant, I always say perfect practice, and it really was a perfect practice. Um, we decided to go our separate ways because I wanted Ricky to really, in, you know, embark upon this empowerment of women. So she started a show called uh, Hand, uh, Hands and Footprints, What is Your Legacy? Go back and look at Blog Talk Radio. And you're like, wow. It reminds me of what you do. It's like Hands and Footprints, What is Your Legacy? It's amazing. That, that was 2013. Then I decided, well, I'm not going to just do a show. No. I learned from others how they burnt themselves out. I knew that Ricky had a plan. That was different. Ricky had the women. She had the plan. She had, you know, the most, and she was a writer. Okay? Great interviews. 
I said, no. I said, no. I said, no. I wanted to start something that was fresh. And so I wanted to start something called Beverly Nation, where I'd have a, a bunch of hosts come on and be able to get those slots. And it was a great, great experience. Um, I was able to hire one of the first uh, gay rights activists in, uh, in that radio, uh, Dar Henderson, who was my first host. And people thought that I got some real nasty emails. What you fault? Oh, y'all having sex? Like, I just hired a person. Y'all mad? Because I started the, my, my radio network, the first gay person, all heterosexual, boo boo. Let Dar do his thing, boo boo. Like, then <laughs> I love you. I love your laugh. I told you, you should have never got, you should have never interviewed me. And so I started getting things together. I had um, a show called News Forum that I hosted myself with a young with a young lady by the name of Antonia Batts. And she was not even a host yet. Ah, then, um, yes. And then I remember Antonia came on February 27th. Our network started February 4th, 2013. Then a young man by the name of Kenny Lozada, uh, one, I think one of the most catchiest names in sports history, a dose of sportsology. He now works for ESPN Deportes in uh, San Jose, Costa Rica. Yes, yeah, so so that's that's one of my most famous alums, and he works for ESPN, and he started here at WBNN. And then, of course, the great um, evangelist, Audrey Dennis. She was my first ever uh, Christian hire. Her story was called Soulful Inclinations, and I'm telling you, she preached that word. Like, she's from West Virginia. Are you going down there, lock the door, is, is, is the morning bitch, you're not coming out until you get the Holy Ghost? Yeah, that's how it was with Audrey. You got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you want to, you didn't sway back. No more, no more, no more, no more, no martinis. No more going out with the girls. You want to go to church after messing around with um, Minister Dennis. But then we had so many different great, great hosts. A guy by the name of Simeon Myers, um, Make It Plain. Name the show. And then, you know, so that, that was the beginning. And then, of course, we hired Antonia. Uh, and so at that time, it was called Peripheral, uh, Peripheral Vision with Antonia Bats. And, of course, her, you know, only only Genesis of Mars Kemp rivals her linguistics. Only Genesis of Mars Kemp. You come on like, ah, there's Genesis and there's Antonia. And so we we built that network. I had a lot of great people. Um, lovely Ellis. You got a chance to hear um, Louis Devon when he came up for my show. Uh, we dedicated my life back to God, and he was part of our network. And then, of course, the great Darlene Lawrence. Hired her um, on the 27th of September, 2013. We discontinued News Forum because I wanted to bring that, that, that grand woman, uh, a great fighter. She was a political um, mastermind. Um, she was a union leader for 27 years. Um, she she led one of the biggest hospital unions in the nation at Temple University, um, and was one of the most outspoken people when it comes down to our protections and our rights. And she would say, "My brother, my brother, my sister, my," and no one said it like darling. Our championship that we hold dearly in our network when we when we break the all time connection records or that people understand listening records, it's named after Darlene. Every night you hear with the Darlene Lawrence Championship. And you said something that I admire my hosts. I admire them. They just don't work for me. I admire each one. The ones that struggle when I getting championships, the ones that, you know, go on to fame and fortune, international internet radio hall of fame, broadcasting the shrinees and nominees and lifetime achievers. But they know better than our candidate Shannon Stanton that's gonna come on on, on Saturday. And no, and Shannon can't even get on the network. There's no room. How about that? But you know what I did? I made room. I'm not gonna let Santa just sit there and not be able to be able to talk to the people. Okay, she's a candidate. She's not an intern yet. So she can't be an intern until one of the people leave. So Shannon might be a can right. Listen, Shannon might be a candidate for two years, but that doesn't mean that she's not part of our net. You said she's family. And that's how I, I, I all down through these years, Genesis, every single host, whether they stayed or not, still family. I still consider them broadcasting the loves. Shout out to um, Austin Atunere, shout out to Jared Thomas, shout out to Jimmy Black, uh, you know, just, just in this year. Um, shout out to all the folks, Broody Mariamen, uh, Andrea Kaczynski, um, Kathy Kasu, they're all alums. Shout out to our just finally retired 
International Internet Radio Hall of Fame broadcasting this Friday for the class of 2018 and lifetime achiever, the great Andrea Presley and National Syndicated Radio. So, um, it's great. It's, it's so many people, man, that's just part of our alum. And, and, and you, because just because you left on you know only dynasty does that mean <laughs> you're not family. Okay, I hate you. Well, I hate you too. Uh, you still family, though. Come on and get this, some of this pie. You know how it is. You're from Texas. A lot of legendary people have passed through the stations and, you know, they've left their mark because they've made an imprint, which now is driving an impact. And you talked about Shannon. So what I will do for Shannon is if she's interested, I will interview her on Jeb's podcast since I haven't heard her on the airwaves yet. But as we begin to wind, wind down, because I want to be respectful of our time commitment today, yeah. I want you to leave the That's listeners. We might do a part two. That's just See, when me and you get to it's impossible. It has to be ultra. It, this could be really an hour to hour and a half show. I'll be back. I promise you, I'm coming back for you. I promise. Uh, hell no, we're gonna do this show again. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to it because y'all. No, 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 I love it. I love this. No, I'm come. You let me know. We're gonna get this. I mean that. Just like I'm a, a, a CEO of a network, or really now a proprietor, because Lord Glass doesn't. That's right. I own it totally now. So um, yes. Um yeah, I was, I was, you know, hunting after him for a minute, y'all. And he just kept saying, oh, Genesis, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. And then finally I had to lock him in and he's like, oh, well, you know what? Let me check my calendar. Uh, I could do March. Like, he, like, the same way. This woman's like a, my daughter, guys. Don't let her talk like that to y'all. She, she do the same thing. She, 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 she. <laughs> So, uh, that's why I love you so much. We just alike. We about business. Go ahead, Genesis. I'm sorry. So I want you to leave the listeners as well as the viewers with one to two gems. The first one could be something that complements our core pillars, which you all know are to educate, inspire, and motivate. And the other one can be a lifestyle gem, whether it's a quote, a sentiment, or something that will really ignite and cause someone to rise off their behind and go make some moves, y'all. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for, you know, counting that robbery for me to be here. Um, in business, and this is what I believe every day, and that's why I'm a hard taskmaster in Genesis knows that. Discipline is never the enemy of enthusiasm. If, if something is done wrong, we can fix it because that's called an opportunity. And a lot of times, real quickly, you know, in our network, we have something that's called an internship. You just can't just come on. I'm going to be a host. Nope, you're going to be judged. You're going to be judged. One day, Jesus Mars Camp is going to be one of those great people on that on that committee. So, never know if it be next year, Miss Camp. Um, yeah, I know, right? Because before well, I, I pray to God for all the rest, all the interns later on, the little babies, you all know what you're about to get into. <laughs> Jenna's going to be on y'all. Uh, but definitely, uh, discipline is never in the enthusiasm. That's something that you need to carry on in everything you do in business when you get up. You know when you're getting that bad from. You know when you need to cook breakfast. You know when to to to, to, to garner people. You know help them along the way, your path, whatever you're doing. Just make it positive, man. You know, remember today when you woke up is the first day of the rest of your life. Now, two. This is something I believe, and you hear me say this all the time on the radio, and I'm gonna use my cadence when I usually use on the radio. We're here to touch people and change people. Sometimes, Genesis, I'm telling you, you know in your life, especially being the intellectual genius you are, sometimes you touch them telling the truth, man, they mad at you. Oh, well, I touched you and I changed you. Now, if you go on down the street and you fall into that ditch, that was you. I told you not to go around, around that ditch. Or the person said, Genesis, thank you so much, girl. I couldn't see that ditch, but now I do. We had to touch people and change people. This show, hopefully, Gave, garnered some great levity, made someone laugh today that maybe they, they, they felt down. You know, a lot of times, you know, Genesis does her shows and it's so impactful and, you know, it's straightforward discipline, never any of enthusiasm. But today I got a chance, to, you got a chance to see Genesis show her pearly whites today. That is very important to me because that's the little girl that I see inside, that grown, that grown woman that's about statistics and analytics. But to see her have that little, that little genesis, little, little Leo go running around the house, I'm ready to go around here, I'm go up on the tree. So that's that's what you saw today in Genesis. But just thank you, thank you. Yes, there will be a part two. I can't wait for you to ask me some business questions. And 
just how can you have a, a successful podcast? So this will be a part two. Um, and I'm hoping it will be in, because it's so busy right now getting ready for the an International Inter Radio Hall of Fame nominations. So I know April is going to be out, but May, you better believe it. I cannot wait. You let me know. I'll let you know my schedule schedule going in May, way ahead of time, 21 days in the, in the last part of, um, of uh, April. Yeah, I'll let you know that. Let hope it, it coincides with you. We won't have enough conversation. Now, that, part two is definitely I want you to be able to ask me questions on how to run an effective podcast. Because I see a whole lot of these podcasts try to step with WBNN, and they be, they come on one week, we, we, great, we great, and then they're going by Christmas. Thank you very much. So it's going to be in the book. And then now for your call to action for this segment, and then close us out by telling us what your website is, because I want the listeners and viewers to connect with you on your website, as well as, you know, follow you on social media. Well, first of all, I think that we all need to stay up and stay woke. Um, we have to be very careful out here. The world is crazy right now. Um, no matter how much you can hide, you can't hide if you what's going on in Ukraine, because it's affecting you right there when you go to the... Um, to the, to the pump. Um, if you go, go to your local liquor store, you're not getting your smearing off a store in Naya, you know, for your mixes. So <laughs> no, I, just, I just had to go here. I'm sorry, Genesis. You know what you got when you bring me on here. But anyway, positive thoughts, reinforcements, family. And I said this last night. Please, guys, it's dangerous out in the streets. Do you know where your children are right now? Even right now, today. Kids get killed in the daytime. Do you know where your kids are? Are they in school? Is baby in school? What are, you, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Your kid's not in school. Unless he's sick. Got COVID or something. But, you know, hopefully they don't have a COVID test, but it's supposed to be a race from the face of the earth. But, you know, it's not. Stay well, guys. Still wear your mask and when you're around a lot of people. Now, I'm not trying to tell you wear masks all the time, but I think masks is important. If you get around 20 people that you don't know, yeah, pull the mask up, please, and get out of that store as soon as possible. Love your children, love your love your love your husband, love your wife. Congratulations to Genesis. I don't know if anybody she's wrecked. Did you did you tell the good good news yet? Okay, okay. Well, congratulations to Genesis. I'm praying for her. Uh that that that, that she has expedient growth. Um and of course, you know, follow me all the time, always at lbeverly17 at gmail.com. You can always have you know, uh, comments or suggestions to our wonderful programming. Uh, also, uh, follow us, um, you know, at Facebook, Ola Deli Malay Wingozi. Uh, of course, Wingozi time both at Twitter and Instagram. Sound like, you know what I mean? It's kind of funny, funny you see my face in, right? Um, and I want to say to everyone tonight, man, to, that's out there around the world looking at this at night and, of course, in America in the daytime, just love each other. You don't know. You don't know when is the last time. You don't know. Love. Like Pele said years ago when I was a little boy and it made me cry. Love, love, and love. That's all he said. He couldn't speak English. But I felt it. You know, this is the last time I'm going to perform for you guys. Love, love, and love. And my mom said, why are you crying? I said, the Holy Ghost. You, you know when something touches your heart and spirit. This young lady is one of the most professional people I've ever had at WBN. Anything she do, you listen to it. You look at it, okay? I don't care. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what you're doing. You got to pay the mortgage. I don't care nothing about that. You call in. You look at Jen Zamar's camp. She will help you. She will help you get to another level. She's a plateauist. And thank you for me for allowing me to be a part of your, right here, the number one bro, the number one podcast at Anchor FM, Gems with Jen Zamar's camp. Thank you. And for you listeners and viewers out there, you just heard Ola Dele, Malawa, and Gozi. All of his contact information will be in the show notes. Remember, you are an asset, not a liability. Your past does not depict your future, and you were created for greatness. Be the masterpiece that you were created to be, and continue to learn and grow mentally physically, emotionally, and spiritually, because the world needs you to be you. Make sure you subscribe and share the podcast. We're on 40 plus platforms and follow us on YouTube at Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp for all video content. We are opening um, slots for brand sponsors, which are the paid components as well as brand ambassadors. So until we chat next time, peace, love, 
and lots of blessings. Ciao!